G'day, I'm James from Walters Fencing and here's how to electrify a gateway. So we've been working on this big property for about a month now and one of the final stages is hooking up the electricity all the way through the property under the gateways so we need to get the hot wire from here to there we're going to dig a trench and the trench is going to be about 300 mil deep just to make sure that nothing is going to squash the electrical cable it's, the cable is going to be inside this low density poly and that gives it another layer of protection we're going to install a cutout switch so that you can fault find easily and they're situated around the property at strategically at gateways and so our first stage is digging the trench. Let's get into that. So while we're clearing the excess dirt out here with our trenching shovel, some people might be wondering why is the trench in a curve? And the reason why is because with this uh, four meter gateway, we can't physically get the Vermeer to run it in a straight line from either side without leaving a blank bit in the middle. So we've done it on an angle and it's a gentle curve and that tries to take out any points where the cable's gonna pinch or just make it flow nicer. Our usual stay system has a threaded rod coming out the bottom of the post. This one's got a steel cable. So what I'm gonna do to make the cabling the electric cabling nice and neat is we're going to run it up through here so I'm just going to dig a little small trench just to get it to run underneath this cable nice and neat so our next job is working out how much 19 mil poly pipe we need so we're going to actually sit it in the trench and go from there so we've got to work out how much of a riser we need so to do that I'm actually going to shove it through the fence here so it stays about where it needs to be. There should be plenty there. And we'll lay this out in the trench itself. A lot harder to roll out than plain wire this is. Lay it in the trench. And work out how much of a riser we need here. We're gonna put our cutout switch just there so Cut that. And now we've got to thread our hot cable through. So our Blue Gen 2 wire spinner has a secondary purpose. It turns into an electric cable sender outer. So we've got our poly pipe and our hot cable to ease the passage. If you've got a long run, like a double gateway, a cool trick is to actually run it a 2.5 plane wire through first, feed it all the way through, attach this on and then use that as a leader to drag it through. For a small gate wire like this, a bit of WD-40 is generally adequate. I'm just going to feed this through till it comes out the other side. So we've got our cable through the conduit at both ends and we're going to make sure we've got plenty to play with. So we'll cut it off there and we've got about that much sticking out each end. And now we'll take it up and put it in the trench. So we've just laid this out in the trench. And we're working out where we want it to go, which is just shy of that cotton reel up there. That's about where we want it. Just having a look. Yeah, if anything, it's a tiny bit long, but we've got a little bit of play in the trench itself. Yeah, that'll be good there. So we're just gonna thread our cable up here where we prepared it earlier. And that's about where we want it to be. So we've just installed our cutout switch and this is in line with the fence so it's less likely to get knocked by the cattle. So to deactivate the electric fence all you do is flick your switch like so. It's a little knife action in there, very easy. So our next step is to strip the hot wire cable and attach it onto the Cut out switch so we can work out how much we need. It's going to be about there. We'll cut 
that off. Now we need to strip a little bit off. So we've got our Nipex strippers. These are specifically designed not to cut steel, they're for cutting plastic only. And the idea is that you're not gonna damage the steel cable in the core. Now we'll just push that and pull it off. There we go, that's just gonna wrap neatly around there. Easy as that. So now we're going to attach a cable onto the top of the cutout switch. Put that back on. Washer. And wing nut. So we've attached one end onto the cutout switch and now we're just going to do a neat, gentle wrap with our black cable around the bullnose insulator. Get a couple of light wraps, work on how much we need, which will be about there. And then we'll cut it. Now we have our little claw joint, which is a clever little way of connecting multiple lines. It doesn't have to be just two, you can connect up to uh, four. So you can go vertically and horizontally with these. Poke it through, make sure that all sides are connected through the joint. And now to make it nice and neat, we're actually gonna put it vertically on the wire. Nice and tight, that's looks pretty neat. Now we're ready to go down and do the other end. So now we're going to put a claw joint on the other side. And I usually have the hot wire underneath the line wire, it just looks neater. It's a personal preference, there's nothing important happening there. So our next stage is running an earth cable. And earth is particularly important if you've got non-conductive soil, which we've been advised by our client here that it isn't very conductive particularly with timber posts. We do have steel here, so these tend to be giant earth stakes of their own accord. But this is a new installation, so we're gonna do it properly from the start. This one doesn't need to go through a poly pipe because it's just the earth. So we'll find a strategic spot for it to sit. Nice and discreet, that should be pretty good there. Work out how long we need it to be and cut it off. So what we've done now is we've just got our tech screws started. We'll poke our earth wire up underneath and sit in the middle. It's probably going to matter too much. And now we'll just send the screws down home. That should be a nice connection. So we've got two processes left to go. One is sickerflexing the end of the poly pipe so that ants and water can't collect down there. So we'll just squeeze it in here, get a fair bit in there, plug it up, and then we'll make sure it's fully around the cable. Job done there. And we'll go across and do the other side. So we've quickly ducked over to another fence, and the reason why is to show you the usual way we do this technique. So here we've brought it up and arched it slightly downwards and that's so it doesn't collect water. It's naturally got a defense against collecting water inside. We've plugged this end up with Sikaplex just the same, but this is the way that we would normally do it. That's how to electrify a gateway. Happy fencing.